Welcome to See His and Hour, everyone, and welcome to our discussion with Mabel Black. Uh, today, we'll be talking about Navajo entrepreneurship and basket weaving. I am Cassandra Begay. I'm the Deputy Director of Yeha Osnito, which does business as the Navajo and Hopi Families COVID-19 Relief Fund. She'e Cassandra Begay in shit, sit na jenny in shlin, twari cheat ni bashish chin. And I'm also Nigerian, British, and Irish on my father's side of the family. Uh, I'm speaking to you from Salt Lake City, Utah, ancestral lands of the Utes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm excited to speak with you and extend a warm welcome to our special guest, Mabel Black. Um, so we'll go ahead and spend some time doing introductions, and I'll hand it over to you, Mabel, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, okay. Hello. Uh, my name is Mabel Black, and my clan, my first clan is Hashkahatzoho. Aro is a son of Bashish Chain, or Chain Dashinala, but Ahne Dashiche. Dot A is done in Shre, Aro, or Jet Hood, or Jet Ho, or Jet Odo is in Asha. Aro, I live in uh, Halchira, near Mexican Hat, Utah. So, that's who I am. Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you for joining us today. I'm really mm -hmm. excited about this conversation and I wanna give a little bit of background to what we're gonna be talking about. So at Ye Halt Nido, as you guys probably know, we are transitioning to make Navajo and Hopi reservation-based communities pandemic proof. We're doing this through the development of innovation hubs that include a classroom, a business center that provides access to business machines and Wi-Fi, Starlink, um, a library, a shared workspace, and a conference room. All of our services are free um, at these innovation hubs to our community members. And we also do this by combating language and culture loss felt severely during the pandemic due to the disproportionate loss of life among our elders by providing language for programming. So today we will be talking to our special guest, uh, speaker Mabel Black, about her small Navajo business and the Navajo rug weaving workshop she recently facilitated at our Monument Valley Community Center. So I just wanna open it up to you, Mabel. Uh, mm -hmm. You're a Navajo uh, entrepreneur um, you have a strong knowledge of um, rope, of basket weaving, and you came to our, our community center recently and you facilitated a workshop on basket weaving. Uh, this is something we were really excited about, and we it's, it's had a lot of participants, this uh, workshop. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? You know, it's exciting. Uh, can you tell us about your small business as a basket weaver? Mm, well, when I was um, back in 1975, I married a family that um, married, uh, married a family to um, Mary H. Holiday Black and um, her children. She has 11 children. Out of 11 children, she has eight children that are um, basket weavers. They weave every single day. I watch them from, from the beginning to the end. And so back in 1975 on, once I got married into the family, I was just observing them and watching them how how the process was how the basket weaving process was um, uh, was perceived and um, and then later on when I had time I participated I went and got involved with it so I started cutting the sumac out in the, the out in the river banks and out just hunting for sumac with them as a family. And um, Mary Black's family, Sally Black, and all those children, they, they cut sumac. So I participated. I got involved. I got interested in it. And later on, as time went by, I, 
I got interested in weaving. They they kind of encouraged me. They helped me with it. Um, I couldn't start from the beginning. I didn't know how to start it, but they pre-started for me a basket. So I end up uh, practicing my stitches and started weaving just, just a regular basket. And then as time went by, months and years went by, I kind of like improved my skills with them. And they were selling. And then one day, um, Sally and his mom, her, and her mom, were um, were asked to participate in the Santa Fe Indian Market. And um, mom didn't want to go. She didn't want to participate <laughs> because she sold, she sold most of her baskets uh, that she made at Ojeto Trading Post. And um, the lady at the Ojeto Trading Post name was uh, Virginia Smith. She's the one that encouraged Sally and her mom to make bigger baskets. So they make bigger baskets. And I watched them make, I watched them making those baskets and selling them baskets. I, I kind of just watched that. At the time, I didn't know I was going to be one of those that would be selling my baskets and you know, as a business. As time went by, um, Sally um, accepted the Santa Fe Indian market. So I took her there, I drove her there, and uh, we got involved for the Indian market. You know, we she sold her baskets there. I watched her, how she was selling her baskets. So in a way, it was kind of like a family business there. And um, I, I participated in that and I helped with the, the business. And, um, and then later on, I got myself involved. And as far as uh, weaving baskets and selling baskets, pretty soon people requested for certain designs and baskets and I started selling them. So in a way it helped me with my, um, my income too at the same time. And it was a, a, a time when it fulfilled my spare time to, to weave. I had time, extra time to, to, to weave, make, stick, make some more baskets and doing all the preparation. Pretty soon I was doing the whole process from the beginning to the end, just like the family did. So uh, my mother-in-law, you know, she couldn't prepare all the materials for us anymore. So I had to do that on my own. So that, you know, it takes a lot of involvement. I think you have to be committed to it. You have to sit there and weave because weaving a basket, you know, you got to sit there for like 10 to 12 hours a day to, to make a better, you know, to produce a real good design because the materials do dry out and you got to keep it moist and keep it uh, flexible and the stitches going, you know, so it takes a lot of, uh, discipline to, to sit there and weave and and finish the product. So, that's how it is. <laughs> and any more questions? Yeah, I think that um, it's really neat how you know it became a family thing that was mm -hmm. passed on to you. Um, and you're right, it does take a lot of work to go out into the community, um, to the land and pick the willows or the sumac. And then you have to soak the, the willows. Um, and I know a little bit about this because as I was telling you earlier, my stepdad is from Ute country. He's, he's Ute and Paiute. And I grew up between the Navajo reservation and the Ute mountain Ute reservation. And his family was, um, basket weavers. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, you know, about all the hard work that goes into it, it is true. <laughs> you have to go out and you have to pick the willows mm -hmm. down and split yeah. three like that yeah. with your teeth. Um, and I think we can share some footage of this because we have some footage of you uh, facilitating the workshop at the community center and we can share with the audience what that looks like. But I just remember it took a lot of work 
And, you know, as a child, just watching this, it was a fun activity for our family, you know, mm-hmm. to be out in the land of our ancestral lands and yeah. doing the things that our ancestors did. And it brought our family together. It was like a good mm-hmm. time with yes. us. And we made something beautiful together. We were in the land. We were using the plants that were provided and we were creating art. And, you know, those are good memories that I have in my childhood of doing this with our family and spending time in our ancestral lands. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do want to sh- I spend a little bit of time sharing that on my screen. Um, okay. I'm going to share a video of, of Mabel at the community center and mm-hmm. she's teaching, you know, participants in our communities how to make these baskets. So I'm going to share my screen and pull up the video. And I'll just go ahead and maximize this. So. So my name is Rachel Black. Um, here we've got teaching um a weave animal basket basket Okay. Try to do that. Day one, session four. Yeah, we're on session four. Okay. We're pretty much just, um, this is one of my students' work, and we're pretty much doing the, we'll do the two black layers from the beginning, and also we're doing the, the two reds and hope to do the two uh, top red uh, block layers too. So then we're using three rods and um, what we're doing. And then, like I said, um, we're using pigment rods. And what we do is the the rod three ways we cut it like this. Now we have to hold this down, we hold this one down and then When we get three friends, then we can.
Mabel, I think this is a good time to um, maybe tell us a little bit about the design. Yeah. The basket um, that we see on the screen here. Can you tell us more about like the red and the black? or just even the design, what it means? Uh, well, I was told that from the beginning that um, that it's the, the beginning is more like creation. And then I also had an elderly lady that told me that the spiral represents an individual human body that has spiral on their head and on their fingertips. So we're all different and our the basket itself, the red, all, we were always told that that is Nazi lit, which is the rainbow. And the black one, the inside was, I was told it was the sacred mountains. Um, also, it can represent um, earth, Nastan. And then the upper, the, the upper um, design is the, the clouds, the black clouds. So um, then there's a final stitch too. So, and then our mind is never closed. So the opening is like an open mind. We have an open mind throughout our life. So that's pretty much what I was told. So that's what I know about baskets. So, um, yeah, and then the final stitches, uh, I was told that um, back in the, uh, the creation, a young lady didn't know how to finish the basket. And she was told that um, it make it look like um, the needle of the, the needle of the cedar trees, the evergreen trees. Yeah. So make it look like one. So that's the, the person just finish it like the way the cedar needle was made or was created, so yeah. Yeah, well, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and as you guys can see, this is this video was taken at our uh, community center in Monument Valley, Utah. And, you know, through our workshop, um, we provide the materials, Mabel, uh, with her instruction and facilitation provides the uh, materials for the sumac, as you saw, uh, she demonstrated the technique to split the willows and sumac, um, and she teaches our participants that are in the classroom um, all of this knowledge, you know, passed down to her um, by her family, and now we're passing it down to the younger generations. And as I had mentioned, this is a class that was really popular. Um, we started getting more phone calls <laughs> about once the word got out about the class, we started getting more phone calls. Like, how can I participate? I want to learn how to make baskets. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the class, uh, our participants in the community will be able to complete a basket. That's the goal. Um, and hopefully they take the knowledge that was shared and talked to them by Mabel and carry that on for mm -hmm. somebody and their family. And that's just the beautiful thing about um, these workshops and culture bearers like Mabel, who have just a wealth of traditional knowledge um, that they pass on to our future generations. So um, it's really important work and it helps us preserve our culture. So. Yes. I did want to share that a little bit more um, to the audience so that they can see at just the type of work that you're doing and see the classroom. Um, I do also have some more questions for you. And, um, you know, it's more about your entrepreneurship, your business. Um, mm -hmm. On the Navajo Nation, there's a high unemployment rate. Uh, there's many uh, dire socioeconomic disparities that many uh, Navajo community members are faced with, especially after the pandemic. You know, people are just um, struggling to get by, you know, with the high unemployment rates, and then the nation is trying to rebuild after the pandemic. So, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, it's very important that we support our Navajo entrepreneurs. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about 
um, some advice you would give to other Navajo uh, entrepreneurs? I know earlier you mentioned word of mouth and networking, and that's how people learned about you. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any advice for other, you know, Navajos who have a skill like yours and they're trying to, you know, share their business? Yeah, sure. I think it's really important for um, business people, you know, small business, even though you're just um, selling your product, it's good to go out to the uh, flea markets and, and share your, and share your uh, skills and show off your crafts and time to sell and make money. Also go to the art, uh, art contests, especially the, uh, all the fairs that go on that like window rock fair. Uh, Gallup, Chinle, Tuba City Fair, and then you know you can enter your artwork and contests, and um, you win money. You know you get money from that. Also, um, it's just one way to uh, share your um, share your skills and knowledge. Um, I think the other thing that that I've done so far since I've been participating and since I did the workshop, I had to hire some helpers too, because my sister-in-law, one of my sister-in-law, uh, she's really good at splitting sumac and then uh, preparation. I, I asked her to help me with that and she supported me and I paid her for that. You know, she don't have any money though, how to get money. But since she has the skill, I hired her and she helped me produce more materials for me too. So in a way, you know, that's just one way to help one another support each other in a way, you know, you can't do it by yourself. You have to do it as a team. And I have my other sister-in-law that loves to, Sally, that loves to go out to get sumac. She goes sumac honey, and she's good at that too. So I, I take her there, we work together, we bring back bundles of fresh sumac. So in a way, you know, you have to work as a team and mm-hmm. to continue with all this um, business. Mm-hmm. And also you have to find uh, buyers, you know, who's gonna buy your stuff? Well, people know you, if they know you, they'll buy your crafts, they'll, they'll buy your artwork because they much rather buy it from a person that made it by you. And um, it's just different and unique, I think. And that makes you feel really good and important too, at the same time. And you want to motivate yourself more. You want to do it more. And so it, it helps me in a way to find people that are interested in my artwork. Yeah. And you're creating jobs too, Mabel. Yes, yes. <laughs> stimulates yes. the economy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wish, I you know sometimes while I'm weaving, I wish there was, you know, you go to the store and just buy a bundle of threads that are already made, the sumac thread. You know how you go to the store and buy yarn? I used to use yarn to, to do crafts like ojos or I did uh, buy yarns to make baskets. And I, you know, I was selling those too and make money. And I kind of thought about the sumac like that. I wish I could just go to a Hobby Lobby and get me a, <laughs> a rolled up thread, sumac thread, you know? But, you know, as a person, as an artist, I think that's what needs to be done too. If somebody can do that, then, you know, you can create more jobs, more um, people getting involved in weaving Mm -hmm. because some of them don't have time to do it. So if your product, if you can sell your product, you know, that's another way to do it too. I was thinking about it, you know, in a way like that. Maybe later when I don't know how to weave, I can't weave anymore. Maybe I'll just, you know, do the splitting and prepare the materials or the threadings and sell it that way or something like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great idea. That could be another business right there. Yeah. You're a natural entrepreneur. Your mindset naturally thinks about business. <laughs> You're yeah. a business woman. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I love 
yeah and you know on the Navajo Nation like there are so many people that I see with so many talents silversmith uh basket weavers rug weavers you know um what's that girl's name Naomi glasses uh-huh. you know a young woman and she she was taught how to rug weave and now she has this like B- business that's thriving and she's in all yeah. like international magazines and vogue <laughs> and we have so many of our community members like her and you who have all this skills and talents and you know even the picky dilly stands i mm-hmm. see young youth you know out on the side of the road they bought a snow cone machine or ice machine with the few dollars they had. And then they turned that into a, a Piccadilly snow cone uh, business <coughs> right on the top of the road. Right. And there's viewers at 10 years old, 11 years old, you yeah. know. So I see many um, of our community members on Navajo Nation who have talent, skills, a business mindset, and mm-hmm. they love being home on the reservation to their family on their land. And they get creative on how to start a small business, you know, right. so they get money coming in. So I feel yeah. like there's many entrepreneurs on Navajo Nation, lots of talent, lots of skill. And I just am always amazed at how um, creative, you know, even the arts, it comes out the way people design their work. Um, you know, we have some of the largest markets, you know, especially this time of the year with the fall um, and the harvest and all the fairs going on. Mm-hmm. So I I think we have a um, a community that's just very entrepreneurial. We have um, many uh, opportunities to invest on Navajo, yes, and, and carry this uh, knowledge on. So I think it's really really great. Um, and you know, even in difficult circumstances with you know unemployment rate being so high, there's hardly any jobs our people still are creative. They're still mm-hmm. innovative. You know, they still create things, design things. And, and that's something that I think we've always been. We've always been artists. We've always been able to be resourceful and innovative with resources around us. We see willows out in the land and it's a resource. We turn it into a basket, a beautiful piece of art, you know? So that's yeah. really... Um, I'm always encouraging and I, I'm always love the inspiration that I get when I see how creative we are and how many entrepreneurs there are, you know, even with that Piccadilly, um, that <laughs> was a famous treat, a famous mm-hmm. snack all across the reservation. Everybody's craving Piccadilly. And, you know, I asked that young man how much money he was making and, and he told me he, um, did the math, you know, he said, okay, what do I need to start my, my Piccadilly stand? And he came up with his own plan. He bought his own uh, snow ice machine. He gets there early um, every day, sets up his shop, his stand, <laughs> and he opens his business. And then he starts cranking out the Piccadilly. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever had one. Have you had Piccadilly before? Yes, I have. I have. <laughs> I taste it. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> Yeah, once in a while I'll, I'll take it yeah me too <laughs> young kids young teenagers they love that <laughs> they love the taste yeah um, it's such a brilliant idea so I see your business like that you know you're very mm-hmm. innovative very creative and then mm-hmm. at the same time you're passing on this traditional culture uh no, cultural knowledge onto the younger generations um so in your time of you know learning about basket weaving, about, um, you know, making extra money on the side with this work. Um, are there some challenges that you face? Um, is uh-huh. there anything going on with the willows right now? Are Because I know there's climate change right now. Yes. Things are yes. changing with the environment. So do you see that? Yeah, the- when there was a drought a few years, a year ago or so, uh, the same place where we used to go, there was just tiny willows there were just most of them the bushes were dry so we had to go to other places um to to hunt for willows and sumac um we pretty much lately i harvest some in um sent uh rio rancho new mexico 
I didn't know they had willows out there or sumac out there. My daughter lives out there. And she told me about the, the sumacs that were just growing like crazy around the business buildings, you know, in town. So we had to go ask the business uh, person or the manager and if we could cut those sumac. <laughs> and we did, we cut all those bushes. <laughs> And they enjoyed it, loved it. They said, we don't mind, go ahead, take, the, take, it, take them all. So we did, we harvested the, the sumac in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. So I went that far this year to get sumac when, yeah. because my daughter lives out there. So mm -hmm. you, you have to look around all the time. I'm always looking around in the, out in the field and looking for sumac, like La Plata or Farmington, Aztec out there yeah so wow i think that's, that's a challenge yeah it's you know i the drought you know that's what i'm hearing too you know from other basket weavers is the drought it's changing things um you know uh, the landscape is changing the mm -hmm. uh, plants it's becoming harder to find willows so um very interesting and i you know obviously you need that supply right because yeah, yes we do yes yeah, so that mm -hmm. becomes a challenge, um, you know, trying to find that. Um, is it possible to grow it yourself? Is it? Yes. Is it, uh -huh. Yes, my sister-in-law, she's grown about maybe more than 10 bushes so far, mm -hmm. but you have to water it quite a bit to mm -hmm. keep them um, uh, more than five feet long. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what you work with. So she's she's growing some in her yard. But me as a basket weaver in Halchita, the ground is, the soil is terrible. So we can't really grow anything. If the sumac grew, it only becomes a bush, but not really, you know, um, not long sticks anyway. So that's kind of hard. Yeah. And I noticed the difference between um, sumacs that grow around here. They're really, they're really tough and hard to work with. They're mm -hmm. kind of bumpy, but when you go out um, in other places by the riverbanks, the sumacs are longer and they're not as hard. You can work with them. They're more flexible to work with than around here. Around here, they're too rough, too, too rough and strong. Okay. So that's the difference. Yeah. And those are some of the challenges, you know, that you mm -hmm. face as a business owner. Yes. Yeah from landscape to landscape trying to yes. find <laughs> some yeah. of them are tougher to you uh -huh. so very interesting um I want to talk about you know some of the storytelling that you were sharing about not only the design of the baskets um but what does it mean to you like when you're sharing that knowledge with the younger generation uh, what's why is that important to share about basket weaving with the younger generations the younger generation, um, uh, that's interesting. That, uh, I got to think about that. Um, or just sharing the, the basket weaving with others, you know, why is that important to, to share? Well, that? Um, basket weaving, the basket itself, when it's made, it's used for um, beauty waste ceremony. So it's kind of like when you use the, the, uh, the basket for a beauty waste ceremony and other ceremonies, one particular one, the basket weaving for a beauty way is more like cleansing your mind, kind of like cleansing your mind and your body, refreshing it. That's basically what, it is, what it's for is that it helps you to renew yourself. So that's the beauty way ceremony. It, it, it goes for one night. They do the singing and the praying, the praying, the chanting throughout the night. So by morning, you cleanse yourself with it. But you don't just use just water itself. You have to use the yucca, the yucca soap. And as long as the young generation participate in the beauty way ceremony, I think um, they will understand the meaning of basket weaving and um, a basket. And basket itself 
is um, it's very sacred and it's traditional and it's used for wedding, you know, where the couple um, intermarriage and then the rainbow, the red, the red band represents, I heard that it represents the blood, you know, uh, that when they get married, they exchange their blood and that's part of life, part of who we are, part of everyday life. So basket itself, it represents a lot to us, like um, it holds um, ourselves, our beauty way, our um, traditions, and um, that's just who we are. Who, each individual is, is different. You know, that's what holds us. And we put all our belongings in there, our rug, our, I mean, our jewelries, our money, our, bun, our sacred buns. The, the, this, we put them all in the basket because it holds our sacred life, ourselves, in the basket. And I think young children, young people, young teenagers, if they could understand that and relate to that, I think that would be a that will help them understand who they are mm -hmm. is they have to participate, get involved mm -hmm. in um, getting that ceremony done. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's important. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with you. I think that's well said. Um, you know, it's a beautiful art form of storytelling, like you said, mm -hmm. and it's a sacred um, act. It's a sacred process to put it together and it connects mm -hmm. the land to family to important sacred things and times you know special moments Absolutely. and there's a yeah. philosophy in the design about how we should be as as human beings right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it, it has many purposes um and it has many teachings in it and so I think that's why it's really important that we teach others in our community uh, this knowledge and I'm just really appreciative that you were able to host the workshop um oh, at the community you. center and that's just so important that you're passing that knowledge down mm -hmm. um what are some ways that people outside of the Navajo reservation can support basket weaving or you know, are there, do you have a website or somewhere someone can order a basket from you? Or maybe there's a marketplace or somewhere that these can be bought? Mm, not that I know of, except through um, <laughs> my phone number, <laughs> contact number, yes. <clears throat> that okay. is the only way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you I know really what? I don't have a website. I really don't have any um, of that yet as far as business because I'm kind of scared because it, it just takes a lot of time out of you. I have a job as a paraprofessional at, uh, at the school. I used to be a, an elementary teacher. I taught for 30 years, retired from that school. Mm -hmm. And then um, I retired from within the community in Mexican Hat Elementary. I taught there for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then on the side, I learned uh, basket weaving. So in between, I picked up my weaving and um, just sold my baskets. And I didn't know that, that it would provide me the extra income. But now I work at the high school as a paraprofessional. So I do this basket weaving and the teaching on my spare time or what time that the time that I have left. So lately I haven't been really weaving at all except teaching. So I'm glad I taught the class. I'm mm -hmm. glad I was hired. I'm glad I agreed to it. And um, Samantha, she was one of my students back in the days when she was like first, second grade. So I was her teacher too, so. Yeah, that Samantha uh, is now our site director. A uh, mm -hmm. phenomenal leader in the community, well connected, and yes. that's why we were really impressed by her background. You know, she's very rooted in her culture and, and Navajo mm -hmm. culture, and now she runs the community center in Monument Valley, 
and she brings um you know community members like yourself into mm -hmm. the community center space who now shares that information with other community members so mm -hmm. it's just beautiful synergy that we have going on um trying to support entrepreneurs trying to carry on our um cultural traditions and preserve uh, those teachings moving forward um but it sounds like you are open to taking requests if somebody would like to have a basket commissioned. So what we'll do is we'll put your phone number, if it's okay, um, yeah. maybe on the Facebook page or an email. Maybe how about we do an email and we'll yeah. put that in the comment section of today's See Hissen Hour. And that way, if people want to request a custom made basket from you, you know, they can reach out to you. Yeah. Um, so that would be wonderful. And we're really grateful that you took the time uh, today to um, spend, you know, your lunch hour with us and to share this information. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, not that I know of, but um, thank you for everything I know of. And the, thank you for... Um, being hired to work and thank you for um, just everything that, that you've done so far with the center, with the Tepe Indusque Center and I enjoyed it, I loved it. I'm still loving it. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> I'll well, never maybe, be done. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, about your website, maybe our staff can um, help you with the website if you'd like, okay. that sure. would be great. And feel free to continue using our services. And we have Starlink that we brought to the community center there. Um, oh, yeah. Mabel is dialed in on Starlink. As you can see, she's using the Starlink at the community center, which did, never oh, had it before. And now um, she has great streaming, as you can see. And we've increased access to Starlink internet for community members in Monument Valley through the community center so that we can have conversations like this uh, so that they can go in and work on the computer, maybe get a degree, maybe, uh, you know, create a website for their business. So we're glad that you're using the community center. Uh, mm -hmm. We hope to hire you in the future again. Okay. Uh, the workshops, that would be wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think for today, that concludes our conversation. That brings us mm -hmm. to the end of our season hour. Let me check our comment section. There's some people <laughs> that are thank you. Thank you for sharing basket weaving. Um, so I I want to say thank you to our special guests, special guest Mabel Black for joining us today. We hope that we what was shared today from us was beneficial to you. Thank you all so much to our donors, to our supporters, uh, helping us create positive change and for doing this work. Um, as always, thank you for listening to See Hissen Hour. If you've enjoyed our show, please share it on uh, your Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. We do have an Instagram page. If you'd like to support our work, you can visit our website at uh, www.navajohopisolidarity.org. Thank you all again and have a safe and great day. Thank you, Mabel. Thank you. <laughs> safe travel. So great rest of your day. Okay. <laughs> and thank you again for being here. I will. Thank you. You enjoy your day too. All right. Bye. Bye.